Uh, hi everyone, uh, my name is Chris Nakagaki. I work in the office of CTO at uh, VirtuStream. Uh, I just wanted to do like a 100 session. Uh, just to talk about, you know, PowerShell, typically synonymous with uh, uh, Windows, but uh, that's no longer the case. And actually, uh, if you read a lot of what Microsoft's doing, um, going forward, uh, they're going to be focusing something um, called PowerShell Core, which is basically um, their open source version of PowerShell. Uh, one of the cool things about it, licensing-wise, uh, it's an MSA license, so it's pretty flexible in what you can do with it. So you can redistribute and do all, all kinds of things with it. So if, especially if you come from a Windows background, um, it makes things immensely easier to be able to go onto Linux, Mac, whatever, and uh, you know, just go straight PowerShell. Uh, majority of things work. Some things are a little bit weird, um, especially if you go into the deeper dive stuff. But uh, for the most part, you know, you can go to GitHub or even search on Google for PowerShell Core, um, and you'll see there's you know several different supported platforms, including Windows, because it is actually a separate, different version. Um, so, it, like I said, it works slightly differently, um, but most people won't notice the difference um, until you start going to the deeper dive stuff. Uh, what I'll go ahead and demonstrate for you, um, like I see, unfortunately I didn't get a time to record a video, but um, there's three different, you know, I, I'm demonstrating the Docker, uh, Ubuntu, and Mac, um, and it's actually very easy to do these uh, installations. Docker is probably by far the easiest, um, simply because you can download the Docker, uh, Docker installer, install it on your computer, and then simply just run, do docker run dash rm, which is basically remove the Docker container, uh, it vmware forward slash power cli core. Uh, now what that does essentially is uh, it downloads the Docker container from the Docker repository, does this all automatically, so as long as they have internet connection, that's all you really need to do. Uh, once you do, it immediately throws you into the PowerCLI prompt. Um, the cool thing with the Docker container is that you can do a get module and list available. And what uh, VMware has done, and I'm just listing a subset here because it's like a really long list. Um, they pre-built essentially uh, a Docker container running Photon with all the PowerCLI stuff. So if you want to get up and running, boom. That's your easiest way to get into it. Um, now, if you want something you know, a little bit more native to the operating system that you're running on, so Ubuntu or Mac, for instance, uh, the instructions all lay it out. Um, basically, you have a couple different ways you can do it. You can download the package, which is essentially like an executable or MSI in Windows terms, um, install it that way. Or you can use uh, package ma managers that are typically available in Ubuntu, in CentOS. Um, so Ubuntu is like uh, apt-get. Uh, CentOS is yum, and you basically just type in the app get and say app get PowerShell, downloads everything from Power from uh, Microsoft, and installs it for you. And as you can see here, and I, I have the modules already installed, and I'll go into the next slide of just installing the modules yourselves. But um, same thing with Mac. Uh, Mac has an unofficial package manager called Brew, um, and the Microsoft actually recommends you use the package managers because it ends up being a lot easier to do upgrades and whatnot. It's simply just typing in your package manager, app get, sudo, or, or not sudo, yum, or brew, and just say brew update, blah, PowerShell, and it'll update it all for you. Um, <clears throat> so as you can see here, uh, I, I downloaded in Ubuntu PWSH to run PowerShell core, and then I can do a git module and I have it all there. Um, same thing with Mac OS, brew, cask, install, run PWSH, and now I'm in my PowerShell window, and I can run git list a module and have all my modules. Uh, the one module that doesn't quite work with PowerShell like Power Core yet is the SRM module, although I, I'm understanding that they're continuously iterating and probably will get that feature functionality out there. Um, so on the Linux and Mac side, uh, it's, like I said, it's not as easy as a Docker container. You have to actually run it. Um, so on the Mac side, you basically, Mac or Linux, you just run PWSH, launches your shell, your PowerShell. Um, and then from there, uh, PowerShell Gallery is available, and there's a, a command called install module. You just simply say install module, vmware.powercli, and I added PowerNSX because this was listed as an NSX category. Um, and that'll install both modules for you. 
once you have those modules downloaded, then you can just simply connect and do whatever you want. Um, one of the cool things, though, uh, if you really wanted to uh, mess with around with Docker and make your own Docker container, you can actually uh, look at the example that VMware provides um, on how they built their Photon container. And it's actually um, pretty simple. Uh, so I, I actually made a Docker container file, a Docker file uh, running Ubuntu. Um, just because I was curious on see if I could do it. And yeah, it, you basically just put it together and it's literally, it's almost like literally putting together a shell script of download Ubuntu, here are the packages needed to run PowerShell, and run PowerShell, and it's done. And now you have your own personal customized Docker container. Um, and I have the list, uh, the Docker file example there. Uh, it's kind of cool because uh, Alan and Jake Robinson are the ones that wrote a lot of that Docker file so you can see uh, what kind of workarounds they had to do to make it work on Photon. Um, so it's, it's a really good example to look at. Um, here are all the references that I have. Uh, as far as the, the switches are concerned in Docker, um, I had a real hard time trying to understand why the switches are the way they are. Um, and I do have that on my blog, so if you just look for Docker, you can actually find it. And uh, it'll list out exactly what this, each individual switch means and what they do. Um, and then, you know, there's the Power NSX repository. It is open source. It is all based on PowerShell. So you can actually, if you find something wrong with like a Power NSX type of commandlet, you can download the entire source, make your changes, push them back up so that they'll go ahead and uh, implement it into Power NSX. Now, Power NSX is NSX for data center only or NSXV, um, but it, it's probably the closest. It's, Definitely a lot easier than the NSXT stuff. Uh, so if you're using that, cool. Um, and it is open source, definitely recommend going and doing that. Uh, I actually pushed one myself uh, because there were some SSL validation problems I was dealing with. And uh, they're, they're pretty active on it. So they're all, always looking at the pushes and comments and whatnot. Um, one of the biggest things, and I don't have it on here, uh, one of the biggest things, though, if you've never used Power, or if you use PowerShell, right, you have to typically uh, go in, um, you have to RDP through a system, right, and run PowerShell to get some information. One of the cool things with PowerShell Core is, you, since you could put on a Linux system, you could technically just run PuTTY from your iPhone or whatnot, SSH into that box, and run PowerShell, right? So then you can get all your information and do all kinds of things without actually having to RDP onto like a small iPhone. So it's really cool for like day two operations and whatnot that like, oh, oh you need that information? Da -da 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 -da. Or you can be having your scripts hosted on there and just run it. Um, other things, and I've been playing around with this later and I'll post it on my blog, um, and there was already an example out there, but a guy made a REST API endpoint with PowerShell that runs a PowerShell script if you do like a get or if you do a get against it. So it, it, it's a really cool example. Um, it, there's, there's all kinds of security things, code injection, all kinds of stuff. But um, for exploratory purposes, uh, it was kind of interesting. So I, I kind of worked with that model. And I needed to do like something like a, I needed to get a JSON input in order to run my script so I can get a bunch of variables and whatnot. Uh, so I made a little, I, I used that. And I made it so that you can do a get or a post. And if you post it as a JSON, it would take all the variables and run that script with the variables that were provided to me. Um, one of the other cool aspects of it, and like I said, I'll post this on my blog. I don't have it here because I, I wasn't sure if I could do an interactive demo, so I was going to do an interactive demo. But um, if you wanted to get information on demand, so one of the things I used to do in the past, I used to use uh, IIS and uh, PowerShell, a scheduled PowerShell script to basically produce an HTML file so that way people can see like the environment. Um, with this, it's kind of cool. I can just run that script to run the, basically the endpoint. And if you just went to the web, if you just went to that server URL, you could essentially, a get is essentially just, you're just calling a website you could essentially put that, I could put my report script in there so it would run on demand the minute you would go there rather than it being like a scheduled thing. So 
kind of a little cool thing to play with. Um, I definitely recommend looking at it, uh, especially with Linux um, being available. You, you, don't, you, don't, you can kind of get rid of your Windows licensing, so you don't have to deal with that type of stuff, um, if you have to deal with it. Some people don't, but um, that's pretty much all I had. Uh, if you know, make sure you're filling out your surveys so you can win a card or whatever. Um, does anybody have any questions related to PowerShell Core or even VirtuStream? Um, I'm not trying to go into VirtuStream talk, but if you want some of that information of what we're doing, cool. Not. What are the limitations of PowerShell, PowerShell Core? PowerShell Core. Um, limitations, so some limitations I've noticed are with specifically with certs. So if you're going um, and doing like, let's say an invoke a REST API call, to, or using invoke REST method, and you do that against a non, um, a invalid cert, uh, it, it kind of becomes a pain. Um, or if you're doing some custom cert validation, uh, they do have a switch now that says basically avert that. Um, so, but then there's also things like if you need like the DNS commandlets in Windows, those aren't available in core. Um, so various different things. However, a lot of the uh, .NET core, which PowerCLI core is based on, um, you can get around, around a lot of things. It just becomes a little bit more advanced than a lot of people are used to. But uh, there's workarounds. All right, and they're telling me I have to wrap it up. So any other questions? All right, well, thank you for attending.